Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here, welcome! Today in this tutorial I will be showing you step by step how to put heat transfer on socks. Just like these ones here, these can be personalized as much as you want or you can just put cute generic sayings on them, generic pictures, it doesn't even have to have words, it can be whatever you want. These work absolutely great as gifts, great as gifts to yourself, they also do really great at markets, people seem to really love them. But in this tutorial, I am going to be showing you how to cut and design your SVG and apply it onto the socks. In this tutorial, you're going to need a pair of socks. I am using this pink and black pair. It doesn't matter, they can be any kind of style of socks. I like to use these little bit longer ones and I like to do them where they have a different color on the toe and the heel. It just makes it really easy for where you're gonna place your design. Find it comes in handy to always getting it in the same spot, but if it doesn't, that's completely fine. It works the same way. Then you're going to want your heat transfer. Transfer. The heat transfer I'm using is this pink because it matches the pink on the socks and I'm going to do a little bit of accent with this glittery white one. Then you're going to need something you're going to cut your heat transfer with. If you're using iron on, you're going to need your iron or a heat press, an easy press, something to apply the heat to the heat transfer to adhere it to the fabric. And then I always, always recommend either using parchment paper or a Teflon sheet just to put that protective barrier between the plastic and the metal that is super hot, just so they don't adhere together ever. I just do it as an extra precaution. But before we head over to Cricut Design Space to design our file to put on these, when you're measuring your socks, you're gonna wanna make sure that you take the sock, you grab both sides, you pull it apart, and you lay it flat, try to get the center little crease in the middle as even as you can. It'll look like this. And usually this is roughly the same size as if you forgot and you just measured this. I just find this is really accurate and this is exactly where we're going to be putting the design. So it works really well. So you're gonna measure from here up into the sides. Just a little tip. So when we're over there, you're not like, oh, how do I measure it? But yeah, I will meet you over at the computer. So let's get started. Alrighty, once we have our Cricut Design Space open and we have our SVGs imported and uploaded on, It'll look something like this. And as you can tell, these are way too big to go on the socks right now. They uploaded at a 12 by nine and a half. So we are definitely gonna have to size them down. And my socks are about two and a half wide and I'm gonna do four and a half height. And you can either do that by going up to your size up here, unclicking the lock and putting in the dimensions that you want. Or you can drag the arrow, but sometimes it just doesn't line up right because we want it four and a half. See, it would do four by five, which isn't what we want. So we'll go up here, unpress the lock. We want the width at 2.5, enter, and then we want the height at 4.5. And it'll look something like this. I must say a design that starts out for socks longer than it is wider is more ideal just because when you make it long and make it smaller, it doesn't distort the quality of the image or make it look all weird. But for one like this one that says sip happens, it's more of a perfect square. So this one, some people don't like because it looks too smushed. I still think it's pretty manageable and easy enough to read. And so we're gonna size this one the same. Make sure you unlock the lock. Yeah, so some people just don't like how the sip is really elongated now, but I think it still looks great and I'm happy with it. But I am doing mine in two colors. And so on this, I'm doing the majority of it pink and just the little splashes in the inside of the wine glass in white. And then on this one, again, the inside of the wine glass, the little splashes and the little lips inside the bottle. And to do that, you can just go on this sidebar here and we can just delete off things we don't need. We don't need any of this on it, but we will be keeping the wine glass and the splashes. The other thing I wanna point out before we go to the make it button, you wanna make sure you highlight each image individually and you hit this little paper clip down in the bottom right corner that says attach. Press it, everything is attached. Do the same to sip happens. Click the attach, everything is good. Cause if you don't do that, when we do go over to the make it, it's just going to show the design all over cause it doesn't know you want it to cut all together how you have it here. Then once we have everything attached and ready to go, the last step you want to make sure you don't forget is you need to flip this so it's backwards to you. So when you apply the heat transfer, it reads the right way. So we're just going to highlight all of it and we're just going to press flip horizontal. So once your images are attached, they're the right size and they're flipped, we're going to go to the make it button at the top here, the top green make it button, press it. It loads it onto our mat, close, looks good. Sometimes. You can separate them a little more if you think they're a little close. I usually just drop them a little bit down from the border just because I like to do that. 
It'll look like this. If it all looks good, you'll go down to the bottom right corner, hit the green continue button. It connecting your machine, mine connects via Bluetooth. You're gonna select your materials. I have it favorite it. It's just heat transfer, non Cricut brand. Highlight it. And this is really great. It also gives you a heads up. Make sure it's mirror turned on. I don't turn on mirror because I just flip my image. But for pressure, you're gonna play around because sometimes the pre settings are a little bit too much pressure for certain kinds of heat transfer. So for mine, I always do less pressure because you don't want it cutting right through. You just want it cutting the little layer staying intact on the shiny side. Now, when you're putting your heat transfer on the mat, there is going to be a shiny plasticky side and then a more matte side with your color on it. You're gonna wanna make sure you place it shiny plasticky side down. And when you go over there, you're gonna load in your paper as you always would, press the little load button. Once it's loaded in, It'll take a second, the little Cricut logo will start flashing, you will press that and it will begin the cut. Once it is done cutting, you're gonna hit the same button you press to load it in to unload it, and I will meet you over at the workstation to weed it out and apply it. Another little tip sometimes when you're weeding heat transfer, it doesn't really like to come off of the tweezers or anything, so you can take some masking tape, take a little piece, roll it into like a circle with connecting the two ends like this, and you just stick it down. Then when you peel up a piece of heat transfer like this, it just sticks to it. And I press mine at 220 for 15 seconds. I release it then, peel it off, press it again for five seconds just to seal it in. But I'll see you over at the heat press and you see we do it. Now, once you are all done pressing, you will have your very own heat transfer on socks. This is the end product. I think they turned out really, really cute. I hope you guys really, really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And I hope you're all having an absolutely fantastic day and I love you all. Bye.